I'm going to continue looking at different manipulations of power series to generate different functions that are related to the e to the x function, the sine of x function, and the cosine of x function. So you can see once again here I have the e to the x uh, series, which is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. Uh, we have the sine function, which is odd powers of x in an alternating series. So we've got x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial. Uh, we have the cosine function, which is even powers of x. Uh, so x minus x squared over 2 factorial, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial, and so on. All right? So uh, if I wanted to represent um, just kind of a, a basic function here, let's say I wanted to take x sine of x. Um, really, I can just take x times the sine of x series, okay? So the sine of x series is the odd power terms. It's going to be x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial um, and so on. That whole series would be multiplied by x. So x would get multiplied by each of these. Uh, it's really just going to raise the power of each of the x's by 1. And so x sine of x could be written as the series x squared minus x to the fourth over 3 factorial plus x to the sixth over 5 factorial minus x to the eighth over 7 factorial, and so on. Uh, and if you notice here, the pattern is, the only thing that's changed from the sine function is each of the x exponents increased by 1. So, you know, you could really look at this different ways. You could say my general term is negative 1 to the n uh, times x to the 2n plus 1 uh, over 2n plus 1 factorial. Um, you could just say I'm going to take this term and I'm going to multiply by x, and all that's going to do is increase the power of x by 1. Um, and so uh, that would be 2n plus 2 would end up being uh, what you had there. And, uh, and then you could check. So, uh, or, or you could just kind of follow the pattern and you could say, okay, when x is equal to 0, I need, or when n is equal to 0, I need to have an exponent of 2. Uh, and it's going to be even each time, so we're going to have 2n plus 2. There are different ways you can do it. Uh, but anyway, if you start out with n equals 0, you'll have negative 1 to the 0, which is positive, which is what we want. Uh, if n is equal to 0, we're going to get x squared, which is what we want. And if n is equal to 0 here, we're going to get over 1 factorial, which seems to work out for that example. Um, for the next one, uh, if n is equal to 1, this is going to be negative, which would give us that value there. Uh, if n is equal to 1, we get an exponent of 4. Uh, and you're going to get a, a 3 factorial down here. Uh, if n is equal to 2, I think you'll see it matches and, and so on. So same kind of thing. You can, you know, we did it with the rational functions. We did it with the e function. You can do it with the sine and cosine functions as well. There's the second thing. Instead of just taking the regular sine function and multiplying it, you can change the input. This is sine of 2x. So here, sine of x, we can see the input here each time. Uh, the difference is if it's sine of 2x, you're going to substitute a 2x in for each of these input values. So it's going to be uh, the input minus uh, the input cubed over 3 factorial uh, plus the input to the fifth power over 5 factorial uh, minus the input to the seventh power over 7 factorial uh, and so on. Okay, the input instead of being x, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, x to the fifth over 5 factorial, that's going to be a 2x as each of my inputs there, okay? And again, sometimes you might want to simplify it. Uh, you know, sometimes you might feel like it's not very useful to simplify it. Um, in your general term here, you can substitute a 2x in there, okay? So you've got negative 1 to the n. Uh, instead of an x, you want to have a 2x being taken to the 2n plus 1 power uh, divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. Uh, that would be your general term there. And uh, again, you could write this as 2x minus, you could write this as 8x cubed uh, if you wanted to. 2 cubed is 8, right? Um, you could write this 2 to the 5th is 32. You could write that as 32x to the 5th power. Uh, 2 to the 7th power, I think that's 128. You could write that as 128x to the 7th power, okay? And
And um, again, you could try to simplify these. You could, you know, multiply that out. That's six. You could write this as four thirds, uh, and, and so on. Just depends on how far you need to simplify it. Okay. In most of these cases, I'm really just looking to see that you've substituted the values in right, or you've multiplied the values right, that sort of thing, and that you can write the general statement um, appropriately. Okay. Let's uh, let's do one with a cosine just to kind of uh, close this out. So uh, let's say that I wanted to do f of x is equal to um, why don't we do something like uh, 5x times the cosine of x squared, okay? A lot going on there, okay? So notice, we have the cosine function being multiplied by 5x, okay? So we're just going to write our series, we're going to multiply the whole thing by 5x at the end. Uh, you may want to go ahead and write your 5x there out front, kind of at, at the start, okay? Uh, we have the cosine function. Instead of substituting an x, into the cosine function, I'm substituting an x squared as the input for the cosine function. Okay, so the series normally would be uh, 1 minus my input squared over 2 factorial uh, plus my input to the 4th power over 4 factorial minus my input to the 6th power over 6 factorial and it would continue on out infinitely. Uh, but instead of my input being x, my input is x squared. So I'm going to have an x squared squared. And I'm going to have an x squared to the fourth. And I'm going to have an x squared to the sixth. And um, again, you can, you can kind of simplify that out. Uh, so you're going to have 5x being multiplied by everything. You're going to have 1 minus x to the fourth over 2 factorial plus x to the eighth over 4 factorial minus uh, that's going to be x to the 12th over 6 factorial, and so on. Um, then each of these terms would get multiplied by 5x. So your final series would be you'd have a 5x, you'd have a 5x to the 5th on top over 2 factorial, uh, you'd have a 5x to the 9th over 4 factorial, uh, you'd have a 5x to the 13th over 6 factorial, and so on. That would be your final series. Um, if you're going to try to write a general term here, um, again, you might be able to look at this, and especially if you leave your factorials and you don't simplify things so the factorials cancel, you may be able to kind of figure out what the pattern is. Um, again, I have a tendency to try to substitute into the original pattern. Okay, so the original pattern here, if I was trying to write this using sigma notation, uh, I'd probably go from 0 to infinity. Uh, normally it would be negative 1 to the n, and we are still getting alternating power, so I don't think that's going to change. It's the input raised to the 2n power, okay? Uh, the input here was a 2, I'm sorry, it was an x squared instead of an x, so it's an x squared raised to the 2n power, uh, and then it's divided by uh, 2n factorial. And remember, the whole series was getting multiplied by 5x. So I could have a 5x out here. Uh, what's going to end up happening is uh, each term is going to get multiplied by 5x. And so, you know, you're, you're going to have each term having this extra 5x here. And so uh, if you try to simplify this whole thing, you'd still have a negative 1 to the n, okay? Uh, that'll be x to the 4n, okay? But you have an extra x out here, so it looks like it's going to be x to the 4n plus 1. Okay, uh, and actually we have a 5 here, so it's a 5 times x to the 4n plus 1. And then I think the factorial on the bottom is staying the same, it's just a 2n factorial. Um, and, and again, it always makes sense if you want to stick values in your series and check. Uh, when n is equal to 0, this is going to be positive, so we'll start out with the positive first term. Um, when n is equal to 0, this will be 5x to the first power, uh, which is what we would get when we distribute that in. Uh, the zero factorial on the bottom, which is what we'd want to get there. Um, when n is equal to 1, it'd be negative, which is what we want for the second term. Uh, we'd have a 5. We'd have an x to the fifth power, which was, if you remember, what we'd get when you multiply that right there. And then we're still going to have a 2 factorial and, and so on. So I think this is going to have our exponents uh, spaced out by 4, um, but we want exponents of 5. 9, 13, and so on. So anyway, different ways to do these, but that's the, the basic concept. Um, and um, I think I'll look at approximating values of trig functions and uh, the E function in a different video coming up next.